I think the most crucial thing in the first round or first two rounds is whether Aguayo can use his great ability as a body puncher, and many people think he's one of the greatest body punchers there ever was, to slow up the charge of Aaron Pryor. Aaron Pryor has been known to charge out at the opening bell, round one. Pryor with the first punch, he scores with the right hand. Up tempo right from the opening bell. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if someone gets knocked down in the first round. Pryor, perpetual motion, he is right on top of Arguello, who gets off the ropes. Crowd already starting to cheer. Arguello with a right hand that scores on Pryor, whose legs buckle for a moment. Pryor seems to be hurt. Alex went to the body and was able to hurt Pryor for a while. Which is exactly what Larry Merchant yep. was just mentioning. Those uppercuts by Alex and that overhand right is very effective in Pryor's uh, style. Pryor is now slowed down just for the moment. Pryor has been knocked down. He will say, yes, I'll get knocked down and take a count of one, two, or three. But my opponent will get knocked down and take a count of eight, nine, or ten. And that has been the story. First round, uppercut the right hand and another left hand. Arguello against the ropes. A lot of action for the first round of a 15-round fight. Both fighters are a little tight. A right hand by Arguello. This is the first time I've ever seen Alice go at this pace in the early round. There's a right hand by Pryor and Arguello is hurt. Well, so far, the fight has been exactly as advertised. There's another right hand by Pryor, and another right hand, and another. And Arguello gets off the ropes. Alex is hurt seriously now. Arguello is letting Pryor fight his fight. And another right hand, and Arguello back to the ropes again. Arguello unable to keep Pryor off him early. Alex's legs, is a key. He, started, he started to buckle there. The crack can hop right on him now. He's ready to put Alex down. But he can't get too careless because Alex is a great champion. The other thing that I can't help but wonder is the bell here is not very loud and this crowd is a din. That could be a factor because neither one of these fighters may hear the bell. Really puts the pressure on the referee. is still the first round, remember. You know, both fighters are a little onward in the very first round because they started off very fast at the beginning of the first round. Well, there weren't too many who expected this fight to go the difference, distance, rather, a left hand by Pryor again. And at this pace, there is simply no way that it can. A combination by Pryor and an uppercut. the round and what a first another factor also is the fact that Pryor often misses shots he did not miss many punches in that first round and he scores his first three of this one an uppercut sends Arguello reeling backward the surprise also much physically stronger than the other fighters that uh, Alex been marine with and I left jab of Pryor's getting through Pryor is very sharp with his punches not only a lot of them but very effective both fighters are missing some shots, like those overhand rights. If either punch land from either fighter, someone has to go down. Both men were hurt in the first round prior early, but Arguello got much the worst of it. And again, prior getting off before Arguello. Arguello, a professional, and that is the thing that is constant. When you hear anybody talk about Alexis Arguello, they say he's the consummate professional. Well, see, Pryor always punch himself out unnecessarily. He burned a lot of energy up. And another thing he, had, he must keep What's in mind, he can't stand straight up. That left hook by Aguello just land. Pryor can't afford to stand straight up because Aguello gets very good leverage. But inside, it should be Aaron Pryor all the way. That time, Aguello got a right-hand counter punch off, and Pryor is hurt. Now, see, you'll see... Uh, Aguayo, because Pryor was dazed from that overhand right. Pryor talking to Aguayo now. Pryor draws a warning for hooking.
That punch by Arguello was just a case of his man making a mistake and Arguello countering the mistake. And that's what he says. His theory is all I have to do is throw two or three punches in the round, but they've got to be good and they've got to hurt. He's such a composed fighter. Arguello is such a composed fighter. He's been rocked by Pryor, but see, Pryor's mistake and um, bad habits. In fact, he burnt his stamina. is not as great as it should be. Although he punches very, very hard for his division. Well, this fight so far is exactly as all the promotional releases have said. That's a rarity. I've seen it a couple of times, once in your fight with Tommy Hearns. But it is rare that a fight lives up to the press clippings. So far, this one has, albeit it is early. Arguello fighting off the ropes and fighting very effectively off the ropes. Arguello got the better of that exchange. But Pryor is still right on Arguello. And Arguello does seem content to have his back against the ropes and have Pryor lean on him. This is just the second round. Neither man is marked. End of the second round. Panama Lewis wants Pryor to move his head more and move his body more and not come in quite so straight to Arguello. Well, he can't afford to, Larry, because, again, Alex gets such good leverage behind his punches, and his punch is so accurate. Pryor has to be very careful. Both fighters headhunting early on here. Arguello oftentimes likes to go to the body. He's not done that against Pryor. Of course, it's tough against the shorter man who's all over you. That was just a push for which Pryor draws a bit of a warning. The crowd must, I, I feel, Barry, they must get um, a bit out of there in the early rounds because the late rounds will definitely belong to Alex. It was a right hand by Arguello. It did not phase Aaron Pryor, who came back with a left hand of his own. Again, you can't emphasize enough, the crowd is very much pro Arguello. So when Arguello scores, you're going to hear it a lot more. Every time Pryor waits, sits and waits, Arguello comes in with that uh, uppercut and overhand right. And the same goes for Aguero. If he waits, Pryor comes on strong. The left jab in the face of Pryor thrown by Alexis Aguero. Pryor fighting a little bit more in long range this round. He's telegraphing. He's reaching. Aaron Pryor's starting to reach now. And it's very, very bad, you know, having against a guy of Aguero's caliber. Arguello took a right hand from Pryor, mostly on the gloves, but it still forced him back into the ropes. Arguello's straight right hand, or rather Pryor, a straight right hand, and I believe I see some blood from under the eye. And he took another shot right there. Although Pryor's landing very well, he still doing a, he has a bad habit of coming straight in with his chin up. It is just a swelling and not a bleeding under the eye. See what happened, the right hand. Aguero was able to catch Pryor that overhand right because Pryor straight up in front of him. And now I, I, I sense fatigue in Aaron Pryor. And you'll see Aguero just take control. And this is only the third round and that short right hand, that was the punch that put Kevin Rooney away. He is not in there with Kevin Rooney tonight, but it was a good chopping right hand. I really believe that Pryor is Pryor starting to get into the arm room. Pryor playing with Aaron, with uh, Alexis Arguello here for a moment. I can't imagine really that Pryor could be armed with real he was fighting like it for just a moment there. There's a right hand by, Pry by Arguello. Well, Pryor has this funny way of uh, doing a lot of punches, then all of a sudden he plays around and gets in his wrist, his second win. That was not a damaging punch by Arguello. Pryor backs off. And Those body shots of Aguilos taking a toll. End of the round. End of round three. Arguello off the stool and into the center of the ring. Arguello's corner, Eddie Futch telling him, don't wait on it. Exactly. That was the problem at first with uh, Aguilo. He was waiting on Pryor, and Pryor shouldn't do the same. He shouldn't wait on ours. Pryor missed that uppercut and the right hand. I can't see this fight going over two past ten rounds, but the pace these guys have set in the very first rounds and the big blows that are starting to land. Combination by Pryor. Aguayo takes a 
good, good right hand from Pryor. And Pryor now putting on the pressure on the ropes. It was only the right hand, though, that scored. The, to, the, the combination to watch from Alex Arroyo is that under uh, left uppercut and overhand right, which has been very effective for Aaron Pryor in a particular punch because he's very strong and has a, carries a good punch in both, in both hands. And the jab now of uh, Aguayo starting to tick off the face of Aaron Pryor. It's not damaging, but again, it's one of those things that over a period of time can wear a man down. That right hand caught Aguayo in the gloves, but he did score with an uppercut. He hit the left hand, Aguayo back to the right hand of his own. I don't believe Pryor is hurt. I think he was feigning injury there. I do not believe he was hurt by that. You know, Aguero threw some body shots in that third round, and I, I felt they were effective against Aaron Pryor. See, Pryor cannot do this, bro. He can't back up. Uh, Aguero gets too much uh, leverage, and his plus is his reach that he has. Aguayo is, on, or is uh, marked with a swelling under the eye. It does not appear to be appreciably worse in this round. Pryor is unmarked. That was mostly on the gloves. These guys have been tremendous shape because they've both been landing big punches. Counter punch with the left hand by Arguello. And Pryor with a left hand of his own. Aaron Pryor can throw punches from all languages. You know the way he bobs and weaves, throws it with the left hand, the right hand. He's capable of throwing punches from all languages. He becomes very difficult to hit, too, just with that head roll that he has. He just makes a very tough target. That was an overhand right at the bell. Great champion's thoughts. You wonder what's going on inside that great old fighting head. The left hook by Arguello. Panama Lewis telling Pryor to double jab and cover the right. Another right hand by Aguayo. I'm sure the way things look now, Alex Aguayo was instructed to pick the pace up and not to fall asleep on Pryor. And Pryor, on the other hand, was told, work that left jab, get inside. I would tend to agree with Larry. I don't really think there is any arm weariness on the part of Pryor. Both of them really seem to have their legs under them, too, and that, of course, is the real telltale. Well, they both now look really alert. Straight left hand jab, although Pryor has not doubled up on the jab as his corner exhorted him to do. There he did a double jab and a right hand. Aaron Pryor still making the mistake of falling in with his chin. And every time he do that, he can be tagged with an overhand right. Arguello fighting as though he is fighting a controlled fight, trying to pace himself a little bit. Pryor, of course, has been the aggressor from the opening bell. Well, Arguello, the, the way he's fighting now, he's concentrating. He's trying to figure out what should be more effective. You'll notice he'll go to the body on Pryor with that uh, left uppercut. Looks like Arguello is almost trying to measure Aaron Pryor. He's not fighting at long range, but by the same token, he's trying not to let Pryor get on top of him. Well, also, to... also, Barry, you see he'll start going low with his punches. Arguello will start throwing punches under. There was a good left hook by Arguello, but it did not hurt Pryor, who smiles back at him and takes the right hand from Arguello. Watch the right hand by Arguello. If he, if he has time to set it up, but Pryor is in there. That missed. Right. Come back. Referee Stanley Christodoulou breaking the two. Every time a goal tries to set Pryor for a combination, Pryor has the ability to throw his rhythm off. Because he comes back with a series of his combinations. Pryor rarely will throw one punch, all in combinations, and that's the way it sounds. Right hand by Arguello, Pryor's not hurt, backs away from it. Yeah, 
Meyer sticks a jab in the face of Arguello. And see, Arguello can't deal with a boxer. He has trouble with all boxers. And Pryor's doing the right thing now. Side to side. At the bell. Pryor again rushing off the stool at Alexis Arguello. Arguello being told to keep the jab in his face. Swelling does not really look to be very much worse than it was when it happened in the second round. See Price back to boxing again. I, I think he realized that it gives uh, a real trouble. Lateral movement, sticking left jab out, changing direction with the right hand. But he can't leave that left jab out too long. He can't float his punches. Long right hand. Pryor looks all business here. Well, he's very serious, Barry. In fact, both fighters are very serious. This fight had all the billings, of course. Brawler, boxer, good versus evil. What it all comes down to is two guys in an 18-foot square. What Aaron Pryor needs to do now, because he's doing the same thing always, two repetitions in his, uh, in his style and his tactics. He needs to faint a little bit more. That was a little bit short. And that was not. That hurt Arguello. Arguello holds on here as Pryor forces the attack. That was a good right hand. That was a cut over Grail's left eye, just above it. Now that could be a factor. That is in the area where the blood could get in the eye. So the cut alongside the left eye, and it's being looked at by Stanley Christodoulou, who says box on. Again, I don't see this fight going 10 rounds. These guys are throwing too much leather, and uh, it's going to take his toe. It has to. That cut is alongside the eye, I believe, of Alexis Arguello, not above the eye. That right hand did not hurt Pryor. Pryor's making the mistake of letting that left jab float. That cut is actually above the left eye of Arguello, not alongside it, right? above the eye, toward the right side of the eye. Pryor is trying to work on that as much as he can. And a good right hand by Pryor. And the blood showing all around the eye of Arguello now. That's going to give him a lot of trouble. Arguello has been stopped on cuts once before. In his first loss, as a matter of fact. That could be a very, very significant cut. Let's see if we can detect when that cut happened. Here's an exchange midway through the round. A clean right hand <coughs> alongside the left side of Aguayo's fight. The face and that could have been where the cut was formed no we don't see it as yet but there we see a four punch combination get through now we see the corner of Aguayo working on that cut and you can be sure that that prior will work on it as well I can't do that flat okay oh hey how are you good? very good very good very good very good Tiene que iniciar rally de 4 o 5 rounds. Tú hables con el jab. Tú hables con el jab. Y termina con 4 o 5 golpes. No esperes por él. Well, the cut is a pretty nasty cut. Now I can't help but wonder if Arguello is not going to have to take the offense here. Well, unfortunately, but I didn't have a chance to uh, stop the bleeding. Well, Aaron Pryor is going to hop right back on. Pryor has picked up the pace here without question. That lead off right of Aaron Pryor is, is uh, confusing Aguayo. Because Pryor moved one way, then he stopped and released that overhand right and go the opposite way. He's not letting Alexis Aguayo get his punches off. The bleeding is not very bad right at the moment. The swelling is still under the eye as well.
It's really impressive to see Aaron Pryor as a boxer. Pryor still pressing the action here. Has definitely picked up the tempo. As he knows, his man's in trouble. An uppercut, he right back with the left hand. That was a beautiful combination. Right at the moment, Aaron Pryor is in control of this fight. You'll see Aaron Pryor come under with his punches. He throws the overhand right, then follows, follows that right hand with the straight left, uh, left jab. Arguello continuing to try to work on the eye, and it is bleeding again. There was a good right hand right on the eye. Arguello wants to get closer. He's, he's, all he's doing is stalking by trying to get close to him, trying to measure him, trying to time him for some particular punch. is not appreciably worse here as Aguayo's corner actually did a pretty good job of that. He's taking a couple of punches on it. And it is bleeding a little bit, but it's not bleeding profusely. Well, the tables can be turned around if uh, Aguayo just picked the pace up now because Pry has slowed down tremendously than he did earlier. And that swelling under the eye is getting a little bit worse on Aguayo as well. Aguayo right at the moment, again, does not seem to have a lot of sting in his punches either. Well, he's fighting a bigger man, too. And there's the right hand, and that might have hurt Pryor. Arguello trying to follow it up, scores with another left hand, but Pryor not stepping back. Pryor does not seem hurt. But Pryor fights hard when he's hurt, as a matter of fact. Because that left hook, not right hand by Arguello was a good, solid punch. Panama Lewis saying, don't fight his fight, fight your fight. He also said he's a blind fighter. I'm not sure that that's completely accurate. Pryor trying to pick it up here. You see there, Aaron Pryor gave a thing. It was very effective. Aguayo still seemingly waiting for an opportunity against Pryor here. Pryor continues to work on the eye. Takes a left hand, but doesn't step back. The Pryor can't make too many of those mistakes. He has a very bad habit of just walking away from his uh, opponent. And with a fight like Aguayo, you can't do that. Crowd really into this fight, as you can hear. Very much in support of Alexis Aguayo, who takes a combination from Aaron Pryor. I like the way Pryor is utilizing the whole ring. I mean, he's walking, he's stepping side to side, back and forth. The only thing I don't, I dislike is the way he keeps his hand. He floats his punches out, especially left jail. He's vulnerable, he's vulnerable for an overhand right. He is showing another whole side of him, though. He has not been completely the brawler in this fight. And he's fighting a very intelligent fight. And a combination scores again. Doesn't hurt Aguayo, but nonetheless. For the moment, that cut over Arguello's eye is closed. Very few men can stand the ring with uh, Aaron Pryor. Pryor should change directions now. He's going the same, the same direction, and Arguello's going to find him out. A right hand missed. Referee Stanley Christodoulou warning Arguello, and between rounds, Panama Lewis went over to Christodoulou and said, tell him to keep his punches up. And Pryor tried to paw at the eye of Arguello. Watch what happens when Arguello goes to Aaron Pryor's body and it comes back with his head. Over, overhand right. Under 30 seconds remaining in the eighth round. Upstairs, just as you mentioned, Ray. And again, takes 
to one and for low blows. Arguello is starting to time prior a little bit better at the end of the eighth round. I might have been starting to solve prior just a little bit. Probably because prior was slowing up a little bit. Round nine. As long as Aaron Pryor is able to maintain his pace, um, it'd be quite difficult for Willow to figure him out. But once he slows down, Aguero comes on strong, gains momentum, and start working that body up and back to the head. Panama Lewis between rounds said to Aaron Pryor, when you get inside, duke him out. Well, Panama wants uh, Pryor inside to stay there, not to come out back outside. Inside Pryor is able to keep those little short uppercuts. Pryor is inside now. Well, you see it happens every time, but every time Pryor comes, steps out, his hands are down, and Aguero lands. He connects with punches. Crowd comes alive now for Alexis Arguello. Pryor fighting away from Cincinnati. Does not feel he's really being accepted by his hometown fans in Cincinnati, although he has no intention of moving. Thought about it for a while. Worked out in New York, lived with a friend in New York. That was back when he couldn't get fights. I feel probably at this point now, probably would do better by boxing. It's lateral movement. But he has to be doing something. Because it's difficult for a whale to figure him out. Neither man has been down, and that will surprise a lot of ringside observers, myself included. And probably should get out of the corner and stay away from the ropes. As you mentioned, right Pryor always comes right back after a punch. After a big punch, Pryor comes right back. But the mistake he's making, Barry, he's stopping, he's slowing down. And Aguero, over, uh, underhand with that uppercut and an overhand right. And that cut over Aguero's eye has not been bleeding for the last two rounds. Pryor's stand is too straight up. He's too erect for a fight of Aguero's caliber. It's a right hand by Arguello again, and Pryor now holds on for a moment. Someone may go down this round. If these guys stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, someone will go down, I feel. And combination, three-punch combination by Pryor, who's now right on top of Arguello. Arguello stays right there. And this is two shots of his own. Pryor lunges in with a right hand that's over the head of Arguello. Well, fortunately for both fighters, there's just a few seconds remaining. That was, round. Just, that was the second good round in a row for Arguello. And that cut has not been a problem for him over the last couple rounds there is the swelling under the eye which does appear to be getting a little bit worse but not in a position at least at the moment of causing him any problem we talked earlier in the howard davis fight that maybe howard davis is not hungry enough that is certainly not the case with aaron Pryor, who still feels he owes something from the olympic games in 1976 he was the favorite to win the lightweight championship in the olympic games and he was beaten twice on split decisions close decisions by howard davis Howard Davis fought for $250,000 in his first professional fight. Aaron Pryor fought for $400. He's been a hungry fighter ever since. And this is biggest payday. I really felt that um, this fight wouldn't go beyond 10 rounds. But I have to say, I'm very impressed with both fighters because they're showing championship quality here. Now you cut that out or I'll send you away from the corner yet. Stanley Christodoulou warning Panama Lewis for coaching. And warning him very vehemently. Larry Merchant has been scoring this fight. We'll talk a little bit toward the end of this round about just how Larry has it up to this point. I sense that... Uh Cut by Arguello. It's kind of it kind of rock cry. The scene here, 
with these two guys going at it. I, I look at the way I fought Tommy Hearns. This, if this fight should end any time, it's just a matter of who has the most heart. And neither of these fighters has ever been want for heart. Right now, the fight does not have a real rhythm. Nobody is in control right at the moment. It looked for a while as though Aaron Pryor would gain control, but he hasn't. Well, I was able to sneak right hand and fight with that good left hook in. But it's some of the sting that's going from both fighters' punches. Right hand by Arguello made Pryor blink, and now there is a little bit of blood showing under the eye of Alexis Arguello. And the blood above the eye has not really shown. Pryor showing that sort of quasi-bolo punch that he says Sugar Ray Leonard stole from him. I stole from him. There's a right hand by Arguello. And a right hand by Pryor. Into the tenth. I still have Pryor very, very slightly ahead in this fight. Five, four, and one. Coming to the eleventh round. So it's an either way proposition as Larry Merchant sees it. All fights have an ebb and flow. I'm not sure this one really has. Pryor is the only one who at any time has shown like he was starting to dictate the tempo, but really that was for a short period of time. Other than that, it has been give and take. Good combination by Pryor. And Pryor right back on top of Arguello. The blood for the moment is stopped. Well, you know, they always, always respected Alex Arguello's uh, punching of uh, talent and skills. And now I'm quite sure they're going to appreciate and respect Iron Prize because he's displayed so much versatility in this ring. All right. That's enough. That's enough. Stanley Christodoulou continuing to talk to Pryor's corner. Pryor trying to work on the eye. There is no blood showing right at the moment. There's a right hand by Arguello. And Pryor backs up for the moment. And another right hand by Arguello. Pryor does not seem to be hurt. Arguello being very patient. He has not thought himself, I don't think, that he's hurt Pryor. Because he has not really come after it. As long as Aaron Pryor stands there for a while, then moves, you notice Aguero can get set. Pryor back with a combination of his own. Blood still is stopped. Now Pryor should walk away at this point here. Or at least he's got away from the ropes. Smart thing to do. Both men at this point look highly capable of going 15 rounds should it become necessary. Aguero's trying to pick the pace up now. Aguayo misses a wild right hand. Aguayo's not missed a lot of punches. He's been thrifty with his punches. There's a hard right hand by Aguayo. But Pryor did not take one step back. Tough kid. Those were some devastating punches by uh, Alex Aguayo. This, some of this team has left Aguero because if not, I, 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 I feel Pryor would have been down. Pryor coming back with an attack of his own. Takes two more from Aguero. Pryor does not seem hurt. Combination by Aguero again. The uppercut and the overhand right. Back with another overhand right. Pryor smiles. I have no idea why Aaron Pryor wanted any more of those shots. <laughs> There's a straight right hand earlier in the round. It was later in the round that Aguayo landed three or four of those, and let's take a look at them. A body shot followed by a right hand, under and over. That is a sign of a very great fighter. 
both the thrower and the throwee. From here on, it's Let's just go, go. conditioning on, and will. All right. As you see it now, the fight's dead even. It's just about dead even, yes. And the pace picking up considerably. Pyre off the stool and right in Alexis Arguello's lap. This fight is incredible. They go both men throwing bombs the whole time. Just make you glad you made the decision to play. I'm so happy I've retired. Prior trying to go to the body. Pryor. The eye of Arguello seems to be no worse over the last three rounds. Well, Aaron Pryor definitely needs to keep that pace going. As long as he slows down and falls asleep, Arguello is going to continue to connect with some uh, beautiful combinations like he did the last round. Pryor has been stepping up the pace a little bit in this round. Pryor with a combination. Arguello wobbles for a moment. Goes back against the ropes. I think that might have hurt him. legs wobble for a minute give and take from the very first round it's unbelievable bar these guys i just can't you know i can't picture anyone being able to take those punches both these fighters in superb condition excellent fight uppercut by arguello that right hand missed a right hand by Pryor, right on the eye of Arguello. He knows Arguello is now, start, he's dumping that right hand up. He goes to the body with it and comes back up to the head. He's changed up completely with that overhand right. Pryor lunges with that right, and Arguello missed the uppercut. Arguello is going to the body, it's Aaron Pryor should go to the body. With the fight at, at this pace, those body shots really take his toll. The right hand was caught in the glove by, our, by uh, Pryor. The left scored, the right on the glove. A little bit of blood showing once more from the eye of Arguello, but it is not any more of a problem now than it was four rounds ago. There's a right hand uppercut that caught Pryor leaning in, but again he didn't hurt him. And Pryor continues to work on the eye of Arguello. And another good right hand and a left hand. Pryor now. And Arguello grabbing for a moment. Now the bell did ring. As we mentioned, this bell is not very loud. Now Pryor up off the stool. Incidentally, that was the first time between that rounds that I've seen Aaron Pryor draw a deep breath. Pryor forces the attack. This is the 13th round. It is still anybody's guess. Toe to toe. Nobody really doing much damage, but toe-to-toe -to -toe slugging. Barry, notice uh, uh, Wales lady throws his left hand. I believe something's wrong with him. He's hitting open glove now. There's a right hand by Pryor. Opens up Arguello for the moment. Pryor leading into his man now. There's a right hand by Arguello with a left hand back. And Pryor seems to be just a step slow right now. Well, you look at the way that Aguayo's delivering those body shots. I believe a little bit of the starch has gone out of Aaron Pryor's legs. must have really trained for this fight. He's showing so much stamina here and endurance. Well, there always was some question as to just how much he did train for a fight. In this case, I don't think there's any question at all, win or lose. Well, he's really thinking also. There's a right hand, snaps the head back, and Pryor is hurt. That was the best punch of the fight. 
and I mean right on the button. That was like target practice. That was a beautiful right hand. I, I mean, I just don't know how anybody else could stand up against that punch. And come Pirate back like right Pryor's doing. Punch a little bit low by Arguello, and it really just caught Pryor out of position. Pryor needs to get back inside. It's too dangerous on the outside. Pryor is throwing his punches a little bit. He's lunging a little bit now. I don't know that he's particularly physically tired, but I think his legs are a little bit shot. Oh, yes, he's taking some good shots. But again, Brody, you have to appreciate this man is in tip-top shape because Aguero has thrown some right hands that would have knocked out anyone. And Pryor also has landed some big punches on Aguero's chin that should have taken any man out. Aguero still trying to work, or rather Pryor trying to work on the eye of Aguero. It's still swollen and a little bit of blood shows underneath the eye, but not so much above it. That was where it could cause him more problems. There's a good right hand by Pryor. Another tremendous round. Uh, you're just seeing two championship stallions come down the home stretch here, and they're just going head to head. Let's take a look and see that hand. There it is. Whack, batting practice. And where Aaron Pryor gets that reservoir of strength and spirit, it just seems as deep as the Ohio River. Give me that ball. The one I mix. Yeah. Okay? Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, when these two rungs, yeah? All right, wait a minute. Good. Good. One Six more minutes. time from another angle, and it hurt, it'll hurt just as much. But you can appreciate from this angle here. <laughs> His snap back. Get to punch back. Win these two last rounds. Six minutes. You can fight for six minutes. We go all day in the gym. We go all day in the gym, all right? Come on. Panama Lewis telling Aaron Pryor that he had to win these next two rounds. I'm not sure that that's completely accurate, but I would think it would be a pretty good idea. Aaron Pryor now in Never Never Land for him. He has never gone into the 14th round of any fight. Combination by Pryor. Snaps the head of Arguello back. Arguello is wobbling. Breathing through his mouth. Fire being patient. Right hand. That's one of those here it comes and it's still scored. Fire a left jab and a combination again. And Arguello's in trouble. Arguello in big trouble against the ropes. Trying to put him away, Arguello trying to cover up. A smashing right hand, Arguello's helpless against the ropes. Arguello's hands on his side, it's over. Aaron Pryor has retired his junior waterway championship. Arguello slips to the canvas. What a victory for Aaron Pryor. Incredible, Barry.